السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Very good morning for all of you Good morning to you too You are welcome back Hoping inshallah uh, everything will be okay uh, How many candidates now? What is the number of this batch? Hello? Maybe around uh, around 36. Okay, so, so there is at least remaining three candidates. Or you yeah. are sharing your screen, your uh, laptop. The attendants are very important, please. Okay. I will give it chance just uh, after five minutes to confirm me to write the chat that already completed or not. Uh, now, inshallah, uh, we are going to just give the, a simple uh, introduction to you. Uh, after that, we are going to discuss the, the issue with uh, D and D, diarrhea and dehydration. Okay, so can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see it, doctor. Alhamdulillah, good, yeah. good, you are a bit lucky. <laughs> so I will make it slightly small so you can see the screen completely like this. So can we start now? Yes, I think we can just start. It's fine. Okay. Let us uh, start by Al-Fatiha. Uh, Uh, let us uh, remember ourselves because uh, Ibadah in Islam is not uh, just a word uh, we need to speak, to speak about, but it is Hal. Hal in Islam means you, you must be all your style go for this Ibadah. Ibadah in Islam, it is not just limited to do like faraid, like salah, saum, hajj, like that. No, it, it includes all our uh, day. And every minute you are in Ibadah, if you make a good intention. I make even the Islamic concept, if you have a good intention, even you are going to eat, and if you just eat from halal and uh, say bismillah, uh, like that, it will be a bad. If you are going to sleep because you need to sleep, it will be a bad also. But if you are working, you must be also a hard worker, but you need to revise your niya or intention. Okay? So please remember that in every second, you are in relation to Allah. In practicing the medicine, it is very important to point because it is related to the, to the other life, either for morbidity or mortality can be the patient die or can be the patient to have some uh, residual complications. So it is very important to be very uh, meticulous because in Islam, there is no way to cause harm for other, even if you have a good intention. Again, you don't have to cause harm for anyone, even if you have a good intention, only you allow it to give benefit only. Okay, is it clear? So please revise your intention now. You are not going for medicine only just to live in a good standard and have a high social level and high financial. All this alone may be very dangerous, but if you, it is accompanied by the intention to give benefit to the other, 
and Allah will reward you for every patient then by extra profit from him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is a completely different. If you are seeing Allah in every patient, you are dealing with him. And I used, if you see someone uh, younger than you, you will deal with him as if he is your own child or one of the child in your family. And the one in your age, you consider him brother or sister. One of elder age, you must consider him as your father and mother and try to be sympathized with the patients. Okay, so we need to revise what is the concept of ibadah in Islam, which is fulfilling all the life of the Muslim and he must have niyyah for everything. The second door, the second advice please to be hard worker. Okay, and the main benefit of time. Please, uh, we are in time of COVID, some of our activities are through online like that, but it doesn't mean that you are free to play games, to sleep more, to wasting time or whatever you wish. No, you must do work, hard work because for medicine, it is calculated for you to have three years to build up yourself. Three years, it may be just more than 1,000 days. It is not a big number to be updated for all subspeciality uh, of medicine, like uh, not subspeciality, specialty of medicine, like uh, OMG, pediatric, uh, surgery, ortho, medicine, all this. So please try to be hard worker. Don't waste any, any minute or any uh, hour of your life, okay? Uh, the most important thing we must be updated. I mean, don't go through the uh, old edition of the book, like even if you are speaking about Nelson or Essential Nelson or another, even ask for the latest edition. Don't go through the old one because medicine every five years are changing a, a considerable part of it. Okay. The last one, if you don't plan to pass, uh, what is the, who can comment or, co or complete it? Hello? Uh, is it plan to fail? Yes. If you didn't plan to pass, then plan to fail. So please, you must put a plan your colleague just graduated previous year and we are very happy for someone who is a pioneer, he is a top student and then top 10 student. There is no difference between people and their style and their uh, abilities. But the, the only thing, how they can manage the time and manage their themselves. So please plan, we need you to be competent not only at the level of uh, UIA, but at level of Malaysia and the international level. What is the unique characteristic of uh, pediatrics? You must know what is the difference between practicing in beads and the other branches, which you are going to teach you every day while you are practicing, okay? But the initially for pediatric, you must be a good uh, history taking, please, okay? is very important. Uh, you must be able to define all the point of the history and collect it. And also, you must be a good observer. I will speak to you during clinical examination. Observation in pediatric is an essential part which will give you an impression about the situation. So number one, you must be a good hearing and asking the mother and the family about further details. Number two, your eye must be a good observer. The third one, your hand must be very smart and very smooth and very professional how to exam. Like if you are going to exam the cardiovascular system, the respiratory, the abdomen, the nervous system, you must be able to have your flow, okay? The ability to do analysis, and the present are very important. Okay, don't forget that we are ready to help you. We are here 
to help you. So don't hesitate, anyone, if you come and ask for help or any inquiry or any problem, we are here to help you to be, inshallah, one of the pillar of uh, pushing uh, our uh, country, inshallah, to be one of the best ones. This is the original one, but the COVID makes some changes. Just remember that we are going to complete this patch according to the regulation, some online and some, inshallah, uh, it may be within uh, 10 days, you will be able to, to come to attend, uh, inshallah, with us in the hospital and see the patient, which is uh, a good news for them, okay? Uh, the student uh, working day, suppose you are working uh, from Monday until Friday for full day, okay? Uh, of course, you are here inside the, the camp, and if you are going to start activities, you must share all. But please, don't forget that you have here uh, the, your library is working with the same timing and also you are able to work through offline the campus or online campus. So it is very simple for you to be attached with your time. Uh, attendance must be 100%. It is not allowed for anyone to be absent. And if there is any emergency, it must be uh, the student from the speak or good acceptance from the lecturer and the sign officers before absent, if it is, okay? And your explanation must be reasonable. Delay of reporting absence will be taken seriously and the student assessment grade will be affected significantly. Take care of that, please. Okay? Can you understand me? You must attend 100%, even if it is online. And you must also be active during that. I used to open the attendance and I will ask anyone any question anytime, please. Okay? The attendance uh, record should, should be submitted to the department before the end of the week if you are going to go to the hospital like before or full time. Is it clear? Yes, doctor. Yep. Okay, the students are expected to dress, also our dress. We have our rules from Islamic point of view and from university regulation. Okay, you must carry your identity card at all time in the campus, in the hospital, and during the clinical work. The student will wear a clean and depressed white clinical coat during all clinical work. Of course, sometimes the white coat here of some babies, we may discuss about that if, the, if you need to put it out for it, how are you, or not, not like that, okay? Uh, before we have all this rotation, but now I think you are going to start with us in SASMIC. In SASMIC, we have the pediatric ward and you have the pediatric clinic. Every day in the clinic, there is a, a specialist and many, MOs who are available, so uh, it may be, inshallah, uh, may be able to come down and good patient also from the clinic and then prepare the presentation and then you can come to sit with the specialist. It may be, it will be regulated like two to three person in the room only, okay? So you are able to prepare the case, to attend the examination and then maybe ask it to make uh, some job. Okay, so this is a good news. We are starting now, inshallah, within 10 after 10 days for the new currency. Not yet on call, we are not defining it. Okay. Uh, number nine are very important. Students uh, are required to confirm the class and the clinical teaching with the respected lecturer or speciality better to be a week before. It is very
if you have seminar, uh, you must submit the seminar at least for this because of uh, attending the lecturer will be able uh, to revise it. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Still hear you. Uh, sorry, because in the hospital, sometimes the internet became interrupted. So please, you, you must contact the respective lecturer about the detail of your, I mean, you are sending a new message. We have uh, for one week, we have this uh, activity like seminar, like clinical, and then I will confirm, initially confirm and ask you, please, you need to submit this before four days before you need to prepare this short case, this long case like that. So, and before one day before also, you need to make a confirmation because you are very busy with the hospital now, also with the teaching, with many other jobs. Okay, a lookbook need to be submitted at the end. So please, you must ask also the respective lecturer about the uh, marking for any activity. Don't let it to the last minute, please. Okay. Uh, requirement in pediatrics. Uh, there is a case write up before we are taking the two cases. I think if you are able to, to come uh, back to us, it will be very good. You can prepare two cases, but we need to confirm, inshallah, soon with you. Okay? Especially when you are going, we are coming to the clinical session. The examination will be conducted at the end of the posting. Okay. At the time, your logbook, your case write up, and the checklist of PE, all this must be available. Okay. So please take care about your time with us, try to make use of it, uh, just to compensate the previous one, please. Okay? Now we can uh, go for the, do you need uh, to ask any questions? Hello? I think, I think so far. So okay, uh, so good. Uh, we're good now. Okay, okay. So I will start the presentation of uh, D and D, which is the area. Uh, is it clear? Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes, clear. Okay, Allah Masalli ala Sayyidina Muhammad and ala Aliya Sahbihi Wasallam. Remember that Ramadan is coming so soon. Okay, it may be 10 days, we will be in Sha'ban. So prepare yourself, inshallah. Uh, you may say, why the area take this an important issue? We will know that uh, gastroenteritis is one of the common cause for mortality and morbidity in the children. Okay, so you must be very meticulous to pick the patient with uh, dehydration, which is the most common cause for deterioration and the death. Let us start by uh, our clinical skills. You as a doctor, you, you must have a good clinical skills, okay? You must focus in the disease. 
and you must be able to get the feeling of the patient. Don't forget that you are dealing with a human being with a lot of emotion and uh, an important point you need to clarify about. So please focus on the disease and don't forget the patient. Be sympathize, as I told you, be a good communication. You must be a good communicator from the first trial. You must be able to counsel the patient and like that, okay? Uh, interview and history taking, if you are going to get the history of the, from the patient, okay? Uh, the interview must be warm and friendly. It can be very tough. Hi, what is your problem? Can I ask you? One, two, three, four questions? No. So please, it must be friendly one, okay? And it is warm, not cold, not fit, okay? Uh, no interruption for the family as you can. You must have a smile. Remember that smile is Hasana. So you must be in contact. You must eye to eye contact, smile, listen carefully, observe, synthesize, uh, support, and has uh, a logic flow. Uh, I think I will. Uh, I will add a smile because in uh, in Islam, if you make smile to someone, it is hasana. Yes. In Islam, even in non-Muslim now, they are trying to retrieve the same one by their own way. They said. Uh, smile is infectious. It means if you smile to me, I will smile to you. And after that, all of us are like COVID infected with millions. So try to smile also. Okay. So this is an important point. The warm and friendly, no interruption, good eye to eye contact, smile, listen carefully, and uh, observation. We will speak about that, okay? Uh, introduction, okay, you must have different type of questions. It may be a direct, but best to use the open one. And after the open one, you are going for the screening questions. I mean, I ask the open one, what is the problem with your baby? He has severe diarrhea about how many times with this food, this characteristic like that, and uh, vomiting. So I need now to screen some important points. So I must go and ask now, is there any fever? No, so I will, I'm expecting infectious or non-infection. His vaccination is up to date. Yes, even he was given, this is rotavirus vaccine, so I know the vaccination. Is there any other member on the family which are affected by that? It may be food poisoning. So it is very important after doing the open to go for screening questions. I need to rule out the problem, okay? Uh, uncover hidden agenda, which is very important. Sometimes there is a family guilt uh, and uh, their feeling may be interrupted, so please, try to touch it very simply. If the family came to you and the child has this problem, then you ask them, uh, did you get, no, and you feel that there is some laziness or the family are busy, don't try to attack them, just make it to continue to go the history and don't, don't go for like claiming or attacking with others, okay? Even sometimes if you are suspected that there is a child abuse, which is the top dangerous. You must protect the, the child, but at the same time, you mustn't uh, uh, speak by foul language with the, with the family or with the, you, will, you are going to, to refer the case, whatever referral to social worker, or you are going to refer them even to police, but without any attack. This do your job without attacking, okay? Uh, no excuse for the history as you are going inshallah to, 
left and right is just about the fifth year now. Uh, cases also, you will do a case like this. You can ask or book previous example from our uh, secretary. She has uh, some there just to guide you. So you must on clinical situation and in uh, case uh, right up. Okay, you must start after the presenting condition like that. Don't forget the history, even from prenatal, natal, postnatal, what about the growth and the development, what about the immunization, any previous illness or admission, functional inquiry and the family and the social history, okay, consanguinity, family dynamics, uh, social things, how much is the family income would they are living like that? Is there any uh, psychological problem in the family or substance of you, uh, substance abuse, or even any marital instability? So it is very important. You as a doctor, you must fulfill all this one. You are not just concentrating on the symptoms. It may be you are taking the history about the patient which you feel that there is uncompliance from the family. So you must clarify the social situation, how it affects you, you need to advise, you need to admit. If some orang asli came to you, usually you are going to admit because you don't know if they are able to, to go through the treatment plan, you are booted or not like that, okay? Uh, an important point, uh, don't equivocate or qualify reassurance. It is very dangerous. When you are trying to ease the anxiety and the tension of the family, don't jump and say, don't worry, nothing at all. It is a very simple case. We cannot say it like that. We need to be honest and clear, but sympathize. Again, honest and clear and sympathize. Mom, your child has fever, we are thinking about, he may got uh, meningitis. What is meningitis? Don't tell me. It is a very simple thing. You don't worry about it. It, it will give treatment. No, no, no. It is not like that. This is infection, blah, blah, which can affect the child. We need to diagnose it by uh, many details, but don't give blanket reassurance. Okay, but also don't be tough. I, I mean, uh, in your work, it mustn't be like that. You said a patient who is leukemia, your baby has leukemia, and then go for the other, your baby has meningitis. The third thing, your patient has life-threatening asthma. The fourth, no, don't, don't, it is not just true, but you must be uh, wasat, wasat in Islam, the intermediate is the best, okay? Uh, try while you are still young and can remember, to remember the name and the gender of the, of the patients. When you became older like me, you will be feel satisfied. You have thousands and thousands of names. <laughs> so try, please, okay? Your dress and the speech are very important. You must be a good dressing as a smart uh, requirement by the Kodeya. And your speech must, must be also be confident and clear, please. The art of differential diagnosis is an important. Okay, please don't accept single diagnosis. Even, even inside the diagnosis, you must be uh, able to give more details. I mean, uh, if, if I suspect this patient uh, asthma, it may be asthma, uh, is not enough, it is just a word. So I need to say, is it persistent or intermittent asthma and due to what it may be due to bronchopneumonia? What is the situation with severe attack? So even for any diagnosis, if you are speaking about nephrotic syndrome, you must be able to say, is it primary nephrotic or secondary nephrotic? Is it steroid resistant or steroid sensitive? It is frequent relapse or non-relapsing. So it is very important to be to have the ability for differential diagnosis. And even inside the diagnosis itself, 
you must be able to give complete diagnosis. Drinking news, as we speak before, is one of our responsibilities. This equipment must be in your hands. And don't forget you are going to present it to me the personal BP, a personal protective equipment, and you must know what is the level one, level two, level three now before present it to us. Okay, so you are taking care about this COVID time. This is a, how the psychology of to how to be professionalism. Okay, uh, your appearance are very important. Your manner, remember that your manner give impression about your heart. So please let your heart be full of rahma for the patient. Even even Allah said, if some patient you are not a doctor even, and there is one sick patient and you went to to, to visit him, Allah said you will find me there. And in some hadith, Allah asked someone. I became sick, why you didn't visit me? So Allah, so the, the Abd uh, tell the God, how come I, uh, I ask for you, Allah, why? He said, yes, this is another one of your relative, one of your neighbor, one of your friend, this became sick and you didn't ask. You don't know if you went to him, you will find me there. This is the concept of Islam, you must have uh, your heart full of mercy for of rahma lil alameen, the same as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so decent manner, kind attitude, high responsibility, please. Don't take it lazy. Don't take it lazy. Every patient, you must stand up and give the optimum care and don't leave the patient until you are 100% sure that the patient has no threatening or no deterioration. Uh, medical morals are very important, okay? To be confident are very important, but try not to be overconfident, okay? Yes, you must have your own view and you must uh, defend it, but don't over defense because Allah said, anyone has a knowledge, there is another who has more than him. Uh, washing a hand and the hand rub are very important, even between examination like that, okay? Uh, don't let the patient become tired, please, by quickly sit up, lie down like many times, so try to arrange everything. Give him comfortable, okay? Uh, also for exposure of the patient, yes, you need to, uh, for positioning and exposure, you must be considered, but please take care about the dignity of the patient, especially for the adolescent. Okay, so you must close the curtain and there must be nurse attending with you like that. Is it clear? Clear, doctor, yeah. Okay, this is an important aspect. Can someone read it for me? Or should I choose one? Hmm. Who will read this important aspect of physical examination? Okay, I'm read. I will read it. Uh, the important aspects of physical examination. First one, stand right side of the bed. Next, exam with one right hand, sequential. Um, next, proper expose, exposing only the area that are being examined at that time without undue exposure of the other areas. This caring for the patient's privacy, dignity, goes a long way in establishing a good doctor-patient relationship. The examiner should continue report speaking to the patient, showing care to his disease and answer to the patient's questions. Check for any asymmetry by inspecting both sides at the same time and examine more than one view. 
Okay, I think it is clear, but I would like just to tell you about the keep report uh, I was speaking with the patient. Usually uh, for pediatric, they are different from other. Number one, you are getting the permission from the mother or the father. You are not getting permission from the child. If you ask a child, uh, school age or preschool, I, I, I would like to examine you, he will tell you no. Okay, so you are getting permission from the mother and then washing your hand or hand drum. And then you just tell the child that I'm going to play with you like that, okay? And to try to speak with, with him, try to tell him some smooth words so he will not be afraid. It is very important. Even during the developmental assessment, you mustn't uh, ask the child a certain job. You must go to him to see what he is doing and start from there. Okay, so the child cannot play for you. If he starts some job, try to make benefit for that. Okay, uh, answering the patient questions with a professional manner are very important. Uh, I mean, also some cases you may find the asymmetry or like that. Okay, it are very important. And for examination, we are not accepting the one view. I mean, if you are going to exam, the heart. It is not enough to hear from front because some murmur can still be heard in the back. And also if there is pulmonary edema or some signs of heart failure, you will find also chest crepitation, okay, from the back. If you are going also to examine the chest, if you are examining it from front, it means you are examining the upper and the middle lobe. To exam the lower lobe, you need to go to back, which are very, very important, okay? All that, so don't accept one view, please, to complete your exam. Observation of a, uh, and the personal grooming. Does the patient look well? This is the most important. If I enter to the patient, I must be able to ask myself, he looks well or unwell or sick. He looks at the smart fit or not. What about his nutrition? Is alert or not? Is there any, uh, uh, he is comfortable or not? He is in distress or not? Uh, he is, looks like acute or chronic illness, about sunken eye with us, about temporal wasting, even about anterior fontanelle uh, or lose stool, all this can give you details. Does the patient appear clean or not? Okay, his hair is combed. It, it may be we suspect some neglect. Does she bite her nail? It may be that the patient has stress. The answer to this question may provide a useful information about the patient self-esteem and the mental status. It may be reveal significant information. The most important to see the posture of the patient. Like in case of cerebral palsy, you will find him is plastic or hemorrhagic or whatever. If congestive heart disease, you will find the patient also neck like that. So observation are very, very important. Make sure that the room are comfortable temperature and use a good lighting, okay? And looks and observe before, before touching and ask if the patient has feeling any pain, okay? So we can start now after this introduction about the causes of diarrhea, uh, causes of death among the children. From this chart, we can see that uh, diarrhea, okay, can cause about nearly 10%, okay, and the pneumonia, it is 13, okay, congenital anomalies here is 8%, which is the most common, injuries, 6%, okay, some infection here in Malay uh, and the measles can be also give a good percentage, so take care about the Diarrhea. Diarrhea, it's a problem. If the patient got severe diarrhea and dehydration, he became like uh, sensitive to good another infection. So he can get any one of these 
infection or even pneumonia. So it will be jumping from just 10%, it will be B2. 30 or more, okay? That is the uh, most important one. And don't forget that 10%, which can be complicated to other 20%, is not a simple uh, sample from the community. It is a very big number. So what is diarrhea? Diarrhea is increased in the fluidity, volume, and the frequency. It can be acute or chronic. Acute, less than two weeks. Chronic mean two weeks or more. Types of diarrhea can be acute watery diarrhea, which is 80%. It will be accompanied by dehydration and malnutrition. It is very important. Remember that the composition of the body of the infant and the children is different from other. I mean the content of the water, it may be about 80%. For adult, it may be 60%, the percentages of the eye, of the fluid inside the body. So if the patient got acute dehydration will be affected very badly. And even it can be complicated by malnutrition. So 80%, it will be acute diarrhea, which is usually cause dehydration and malnutrition, dysentery, which is 10%, can be accompanied by anorexia and weight loss and the damage to the mucosa. The resistant to diarrhea, okay, can cause dehydration and malnutrition also. The resistant, which, which mean between one and two weeks, okay. So diarrhea can be acute, prolonged or the resistant and the chronic. Let us concentrate in this one, which is very important. The area can be infection and the non-infection, okay? If we are going to non-infection, we mustn't forget that. Malabsorption, I mean the the gastrointestinal tract cannot tolerate the food, okay? So it has malabsorption, like in case of cystic fibrosis and the other. It may be lactose intolerance or uh, some milk allergy, like cow milk allergy. All, all this will cause diarrhea, but it is non-infectious, okay? The infectious one, we must differentiate it, is it the problem is in the intestine alone, so we call it enteral diarrhea. Or it is part of systemic one, which is the enteral diarrhea. So enteral means the problem is only in? In the intestine. Okay, but if it is the part of systemic disease, like otitis media, like pneumonia, like UTI, like dengue fever. So it will be a parent, parental one. So intran and parental. Don't forget. So now we have infection which can be intran or parental or malabsorption one. So this will give you ability to identify. If it is intran, it can be viral, which is most important like rotavirus, adenovirus, enterovirus. What is this? Bacterial, like cholera, and you must know like Salmonella, Escherichia coli, Shigella. Okay, it may be parasite like Entamoeba hysteritica, Gardia lambria, uh, parasitic infestation, and the candida. So now I will give just an example. This child has, okay, AGE, it is not enough. AGE due to, it is enteral diarrhea due to, to uh, rotavirus. Or it is bacteria due to Salmonella or E. coli. Or the child has dysentery. Or the child has diarrhea as a part of parenteral diarrhea secondary to dengue or otitis media. That's why it is very important to check the eyes of the babies in most of cases of fever. 
even pneumonia sometimes it can irritate the gut and cause uh, diarrhea and vomiting also. Okay, uh, is it clear this one? Yes, it is clear, doctor. So if you got a patient in the exam, which is AGE, try to complete the sentences. Give me, uh, someone can give me example. If we come to here, it will be EGE secondary to? Rotavirus. Yeah, viral, uh, and this all are infectious. Viral infection, rotaviral infection, okay? This one can be EGE secondary to dysentery. Okay, which may be Gardia lambria, which is a most common. This is AGE secondary to otitis media or pneumonia, or it will be very frank because it will be a prolonged time also. Again, this is how we are applying the the history, physical examination, investigation, and the treatment. Very clear with us. Number one, and observation. We're going to put the history, and then exam the child, and then what investigation are needed. And lastly, how can we treat? For you, from introduction until investigation, you must be very clever for treatment. You must know the general lines of the treatment. It may be you are not required to go so Can you hear me now? Yes, Dr. Okay. okay. Can you see now also the screen? So sorry, the issue here in the hospital, uh, some rooms are not so good for the internet. Okay. So please, like any case, you must concentrate on history, taking a physical examination, investigation, and the general line of treatment, please. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, doctor. I think we cannot see your screen, or is it just me? You cannot see my screen now. Yeah. Share screen. Can you see it now? Now, yes. Yeah. Okay, hopefully. <laughs> it's okay, doctor. Yeah. So it, is, it is very important for us to go through all this line, history, physical examination, investigation, and the general line of treatment, which is the same scenario when you are seeing the patient, when you are examining you for the patient, okay? This is the history taking for the area, okay? We, we must check the chief complaint, which is the onset and the duration, frequency and the volume. What is the nature? It is very important also for the diagnosis. Some cases of secretory is different than uh, osmotic diarrhea. Secretory diarrhea, it will be resistant with fasting. And it may denote uh, a severe infection like bacteria, like cholera or other. Osmotic diarrhea is stop with, uh, with fasting. Dysentery is not only blood, because some colleagues, when they hear that there is some blood in the stool, they will go directly for the dysentery. Dysentery means there is blood, mucus, and pus. Okay? And sometimes there is like tenismus. They will tell you as the baby is trying to strain like that, okay? Esteatorrhea, which is a part of the malabsorption, usually will be accompanied by Pale, it will be pale, 
greasy, bulky, and poorly formed, and sometimes foul uh, odor. All this is a part of steatorrhea. So to go the history about the nature, it will guide you. If you ask the patient why is NPM still has diarrhea, even if you admit the patient to your unit and you started the IV fluid and make him NPM and still he's passing, passing emotion, you must be very cautious, okay? Of course, the color of diarrhea are very important. Don't forget that some cases has, uh, we only concentrate on bloody diarrhea, but sometimes if you found uh, water, uh, rice water diarrhea, like in case of cholera, it is very dangerous, okay? Rule of seven, okay, is very important to remember. Try to make it simple for you. Cannot. Okay. So it is uh, very important to rule uh, to remember this one. How is the frequency, the volume, the consistency? What about the color, the odor? Is there any blood or mucus? This is the Bristol uh, stool chart. You must be able also to put the, the patient at which chart, okay? The last two one, uh, it will be related to severity of the diarrhea. The first one, it can be go even with the constipation, okay? So you must tell us what is the uh, Bristol uh, stool chart, how is it? You must go through it and be able to answer. Even you can get the knowledge from the mother. Okay. Uh, very important uh, is that there is some signs of disease can be the cause or can be the complication. Okay. So if the patient is dehydrated, which is the most common complication. Uh, you must ask about his thirst or not. He is eager to drink a lot of water. What about his irritability, restlessness, lethargy, level of consciousness, urine output? These are very important. So don't forget, please, to concentrate on that. Irritability, level of consciousness, urine output, even loss of weight, because you are dividing the degree of dehydration according to the weight loss. Malabsorption, this is chronic weight loss, not the acute one, failure to thrive or a specific symptom. Other like the dysentery or electrolyte disturbance. Electrolyte disturbance can be presented by a lot of complication, even cardiac arrhythmia. Other history in the past, uh, in the past medical history, you, can, you must ask about the prior medication. It may be the patient to put some antibiotic, which can cause diarrhea, like uh, amoxicillin calabulinic acid or laxative. History of bowel operation before you may suspect that this child has disease known as short bowel syndrome. What about the diet? And how it is, it is prepared with the food. It is very important, okay? Is there any family history of another person who got the diarrhea? So we may suspect it can be infectious one, okay? Is there any history in the family of cystic fibrosis, irritable bowel disease, or inflammatory bowel disease? Okay, where he is staying because the one who is going to Tajika or daycare center or like that, we must ask about the other children and is there any infection there. The water supply and the sewage disposable are very, very important to ask about. The physical examination, it is very important to comment about general. Number one, about the consciousness level, about is lethargic or weak or not, is there any abnormal color like pale or jaundice, what about the lymphadenopathy, any signs of malnutrition or anemia, and then go for the, the anthropometry, which is high weight and head circumference, must be done routinely for all babies, but here the weight will help us to define the degree of dehydration. Do you know? 
How can we divide the degree of dehydration according to the weight loss? Anyone can answer? Hello? Doctor, is it that we uh, classify the dehydration by no clinically detectable dehydration and then clinical dehydration and then uh, state of shock? Uh, yes, five, less than 5% will be uh, no clinically detectable. Or mild. So we have mild before 5 and between 5 and 10, it will be moderate and more than 10, it is severe. This is for small babies, but for the eldest one, I think you are writing a different, which can be like uh, four and seven, okay? We will see it after that. So uh, we'll see the table for uh, dehydration then we must go for abdominal examination, okay? It's very important to remember that for any organ we are going to examine after observation, uh, 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 we have four things to do, okay? The number one, inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. So we must observe the organ again about the abdomen. It, it looks like very, scaphoid abdomen is malnutrition or it is distended like that. It is very important and palpation, percussion and auscultation. Auscultation here are uh, uh, important and even you can see the prostatic movement if the patient has severe diarrhea. Remember that the intestinal sound or bowel sound are only few, about five per minute like that. So if it is exaggerated, it means that the child has some sort of uh, increase peristalsis, okay? So this is the persistent movement. Is there any scar or distension? Okay, what about tenderness or rigidity? If you find any rigidity, it means uh, maybe consider surgical causes. Is there any mess? The bowel sound it is normal or increase or absent because sometimes the child has like ileus, okay? What about the pre-rectal examination? Is there uh, uh, any excretion of the very inner area or any warmness or any blood. Okay, this is very important. That's why you must try to get a look to the bumpers uh, or the diaper to see the content. Is it foul smelling or not? What is the color? Is there any blood? Is there any mucus? Is there any warmness which will guide us? The hydration status here are very important. You can read this table, please. Someone can read it and uh, interpret it for me, please. Uh, another one, we need to select another one to, to interpret this table, please. Okay, so if the patient is uh, not dehydrated, then uh, it's less than 3%, and then they still appear alert and well. Most of the parameters are still normal. They are not thirsty, thirsty and the skin turgidity is also normal. Is, it, is that okay, or should yes. we go line by line? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you can go for, uh, I, I prefer to go it, uh, Vertical, not horizontal. The mild will be like that, the moderate will be like that. Vertical. Okay. Uh, so by the, uh, uh, by the mild, moderate and severe? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. Okay, yeah, so for a mild, so it's, uh, the general appearance is still alert and well. Most of the parameters are still within the normal range. Uh, the patient does not appear, thirsty, is not thirsty and the skin turgidity is normal, but when you go to the moderate uh, dehydration, 
then uh, you start to, to see some changes like uh, the patient uh, can appear restless or lethargic. And then that's when you see that the eyes are sunken, the anterior fontanelle is also sunken. Um, uh, uh, the patient is thirsty and then the mucous membrane is dry. But for the, uh, for the uh, pulse, uh, respiration and uh, blood pressure. So you start to see some changes there. But compared to severe dehydration, so that's when you have more than 10% deficit. Um, now the patient uh, starts to appear drowsy. And then uh, the changes in the anterior fontanelle eyes is even more uh, marked. So like, let's say the eyes are even more sunken, anterior fontanelle is very sunken. Uh, the patient refuses to feed now, although they may be thirsty, yeah. And the mucous membrane is also now very dry compared to the moderate one. And then the, the, the what do you call this? The vital signs like the, the pulse. Uh, now you start to see profound changes like the pulse can be very rapid, but it's weak because the circulation status has um, dropped. Uh, you may see Cosmos breathing, the BP may be unrecordable. The capillary refill time is more than two seconds. Uh, yeah, you have reduced skin turgidity and then you have a uh, very reduced uh, urine output. Yeah. So my colleague, yeah. So this is the criteria, how can we define is it mild or moderate or severe? And this is the parameter we will repeat it one, two, three, until 100 times, so we will not forget anything. What is the cosmic breathing? Can you hear me? Can you hear me or not? Yes, doctor, we can hear you. What is the cosmic breathing? You just finish your basic. Okay. You uh, need to... mm -hmm. well, when you have the fall in blood pressure, but a paradoxical rise in the pulse rate, is that related to the Kusmal's breathing? No. No, you must okay. read because this, this is uh, an important sign of, of metabolic acidosis. Okay. The cosmic breathing, you need to read about it. If the patient became severely acidotic, it will start to go like if you see any patient with diabetic ketoacidosis, you'll find him getting a deep breath, okay, uh, and working in the chest, known as cosmic breathing, which is very dangerous sign. At this point, you must do also the blood gas for the patient. Okay, this is the same table devised by the same clinical criteria for commonly used classification of the dehydration. Okay, nearly uh, is the same. Okay, with the, what about the vital sign? This is an important point here. The vital signs are vital. Again, the vital signs are vital. So you must be able to speak about the heart. If you start to go to tachycardia or market tachycardia, it means the dehydration are increasing. What about the breathing? Normal increased here, increased and deep, which is the cosmic breathing. Very increased, but it is not just a superficial increase. It is deep. It means metabolic acidosis. What about the pulse? Also, it will be uh, normal to decrease. After that, it will be poor uh, quality. So you can you cannot feel it very good. The capillary refill time, 
okay, if it started to be prolonged, it is very dangerous. What about the perfusion? What about the blood pressure? Normal, normal, it will be try to hear. It means the patient has compensated shock. If he come to be decompensated, I mean he started to go to hypotension and even the, the heart rate became high. This and a time which is known as decompensated shock. So remember that we have two types, compensated and decompensated. If you pick the, baby, the child early, during the time, I mean before the blood pressure started to be decreased, you can save him. Otherwise, after that, it is known as reversible or irreversible. Sometimes you cannot reverse it. Here is how to assess the patient for dehydration clinically. And once I will see you, I will ask you to do it. Don't forget we are going to start from the anterior frontal vein, which may close at about 18 months of age. Okay, so we have sunken fontanel. What about the uh, level of consciousness? What about the eye? Two things, don't forget, sunken. And if he's crying, you still, it means that his body are very dry. Dry mucous membrane, here tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, okay, capillary refill time are very important. And this is a skin benching, and don't forget the loss of weight and the oligoria are very, very important. If the mother told you that the child has it pass urine now for considerable time, maybe half day or more, take care because the kidney can, can go failure or injury easily at the time. And they, we saw some patient which ended by uh, chronic renal failure and they need replacement for that. Okay. Is it clear? Doctor, may I ask a question? Yes. Uh, okay, okay uh, to check for the uh, uh, skin turgidity, uh, do, do we only do it on the uh, abdomen or is there any other side for to assess the skin I, I, I prefer it to be in the abdomen so I can see the return very clear because the abdomen are very wide. The same like capillary field time, sometimes you are using the fingernail. Some can put their hands here in the chest over the sternum and see the refill. It depends, but for me, I prefer, I prefer to be in the abdomen because it is a wide area and you can catch it uh, smoothly and you can see the skin if it's coming very slowly or normal. I see. Thank you, doctor. And, uh, don't forget that some cases of uh, hyperosmolar dehydration doesn't put this uh, skin turgidity may, may not be very clear, okay? Even some said it will be the skin looks like doughy, like doughy one, okay? So it is very important to comment about that. After clinical signs, you are going now to the investigation. Any investigation, please, you are going to consider in your practice, you must have rationale, why? why you did this one and what you are searching about, okay? So here's the blood investigations, uh, food blood count, of course, you are checking for anemia or anemia of coronary disease, hematocrit, what about the white count? And if you are searching for white count, you must search for the differential white count. I mean by the differential, uh, we have five subset of white count, which is neutrophil, can be matched with bacterial infection, lymphocyte with viral, eosinophil with uh, parasitic or allergy, and like that. So you must be able to do a good interpretation of a full blood count. Don't forget uh, to ask someone of the group to or two person to do how to interpret the full blood count for me, please. So all the all of you can get benefit. Of course, the most important is the renal profile. Okay. So for the dehydration can increase urea and creatinine. 
And the most dangerous is the electrolyte imbalance, which can be life safe as life threatening one. Okay. Don't forget that the tube is for the sodium, which you are dividing the type of diarrhea, either hypo or iso or hypertonic. Okay, if the sodium is low, it is hypo. If it is normal, it is iso. And if it is high, it is a hypertonic one. Of course, you may need to do blood culture for, even for the stool, uh, blood and also stool for the blood if needed. And the blood gas, as we speak before, if we found the respiration, rapid and deep, or a shock situation and abnormal uh, vital signs. Then we are coming to the specific, which is stool investigation, examination for microscopic and the gram stain, stool for leukocyte, and the stool culture, which can define any disease tree severity of dehydration, if the patient is chronically ill, all this we must go for considering the blood culture. Okay. If he looks toxic, he may compromise. Sometimes we do stool pH for reducing the substance to define the lactose intolerance. Okay. Uh, this collection of stool for 72 hours and analyzing it to see the, the size and the fat content and like that, it may be guidance for malabsorption. Other, like colonoscopy, are very considered in chronic one to diagnose inflammatory bowel disease or other problem uh, and uh, or ulcer colitis. Uh, sometimes urine can be considered also because you FME uh, can be presented by diarrhea, which is considered as a secondary diarrhea. So number one, we start by the blood, and then we go for the specific investigations and further investigation. Okay. Here is the how can we differentiate the diarrhea? into iso or hypertonic or hypotonic, okay? So the prevalence usually it is iso then hyper. Hypotonic is, is the rarest one, okay? The loss here consider according to the title, okay? The plasma osmolality here you will find here is normal, but because of hypernatremic here you will find it high, reverse is the high which will be the serum sodium also is the same. What about the first? First for ISO, okay, is in there, but it is more in hyper and very less in hypotonic. Skin turgor, as you can see here, uh, it is present in the isotonic. In the hypertonic, you sometimes you cannot lose uh, you can appreciate uh, skin tear gar loss, but it is very available in hypotonic. Seizure may occur in these two types, okay? But it is very common in the hypermetronic because increased sodium or decreased sodium can cause convulsion. Mental status here is irritable. Here is very irritable. Here, even here, it can come in coma or lethargy. Shock is very common in hypo and in severe, uh, in hyponatremic and in severe ISO. So this is an important point which help you to differentiate between the three types. Maybe after you got the blood urea serum electrolyte, you are able to say this is EGE with uh, isotonic or hypertonic. So for diagnosis, we must be able to say, is it acute diarrhea or chronic diarrhea? What about the dehydration must be forgotten? Are you able to come to diagnosis? Like, is it a viral dysentery? Is it complicated by anything like complicated by pneumonia like, like that? Is there any concomitant illness? I mean, if the patient has like cystic fibrosis, certain disease, what about the growth and the development are very important. So this is how we are able to do complete diagnosis. Treatment, remember that the ORS is a life-saving and is the one of the most important treatments, okay? 
the issue of RSU are trying to compensate both fluid and electrolytes. If the family are going just to give him the baby just uh, water, it will cause severe electrolyte imbalance. Okay, of course, the dietary therapy are very important. Some are recommended like zinc, antimicrobial if needed, and some others. So this is the management. Okay. So we are plan put this as plan A. If you know or my some dehydration will be plan B. The third one will be plan C. So we have now three plans, less than five, between five and 10, and more than 10. So if you saw the patient with gastroenteritis, you must make quick assessment of the child, airway, uh, breathing, and circulation, and then watch out for any hypovolemic shock through the vital sign which you speak before. The blood pressure, the pulse rate, the capillary field time like that. And if needed resuscitation, you must start directly. Uh, but its aim is mainly to correct the dehydration. Okay. If the patient has mild, which is plan A, can be treated at home through extra fluid until the rear drop and to continue feeding and advise when to return. And this is a very important. If you are going to feel confident to discharge some babies, just to tell the family your action plan. I mean, if the patient became deteriorated, they started to vomit frequently like that because please, you must come back to the hospital. And sometimes you are making it in a written uh, form. Okay, if they became more sick, febrile, blood in stool, you must come to us directly. This is just a recommend of some uh, fluid which you can help, which is uh, a salt sugar solution. I mean, it contains bo both salt and salt. I remember before when we are graduated and some area in Africa like that, I like severe dehydration. We ask the family just to bring like one liter of water and to put one spoon of sugar and half a spoon of salt to make something like ORS until it was done after that, okay? So it is very important to, to use this video. It can be lemon water, rice water, soap, let's see, coconut water, and the plain water can be allowed, but not alone. There is another one which is not advisable because it can increase the motion. Here is the electrolyte composition, which are very important. This is the electrolyte composition in the acute diarrhea. Now we are going to differentiate between cholera and non-cholera in adult and the children. It's very important if we come to patient with severe osmotic uh, diarrhea, we can find that the sodium here is 100, 101, potassium is 27, chloride is 92, and bicarb is 32. If non cholera, they will find a big difference. You see here how much is the difference. The sodium loss is less, and the potassium nearly the same. Okay, what about the <coughs> chloride? It is 50%. Okay, and the bicarb loss here, 14 here is 32, so more than double. That's why we did ORS try to put this composition like that. Now we have ORS. A modified one which contain this amount of sodium, okay, 75 or 90, potassium is the same, okay, the chloride is slightly in the ORS and the issue for bicarbonate is here is 10 and here is 30. So this is an important idea how we are managed. At the end, you are going to prescribe the ORS for the patient. 
let us come back now to the basic clinical science. How is the affliction of the microvilli of the child? Okay. And here you can see now how is the ETB is, is working, okay, for the electrolyte, okay. So from the lumen and to, into the cell, into the interstitial fluid, how is the cycle are going now through the cyclic AMV and the ATP? And you can see here, This is the largest we can do. Okay. So all of this are trying to, to tell you what is going with the, the cycle of water inside your body, which I told you before, it is about 80% of the children. Okay. Either is there any affection here in the microvilli level? What about the excretion and the absorption? Uh, it is a very important. How to come, uh, how we can manage for the dehydration for the plan B. Okay, we spoke already about plan A, which we just give extra fluid like that and adjust the diet. Plan B, we are going to give ORS about 50 to 75 ml per kilo. ORS over four hour period. And this is just like example if the child has six kilos, okay? And we are going to offer him from 200 to 40. If a four months, we are going to give him over 40 to 700, but you may try to calculate it by kilogram. Okay. But I mean, it is 50 to 75 uh, millimeter kilo. And then reassess after four hours and they classify the child for dehydration. It's very important. The patient need frequent assessment. Okay. Go for the appropriate plan. It's blame the three, uh, the three rule of home management. Give extra fluid, continue feeding, and when to return. Okay, so you must have ability to have a good counseling with the family and the education. Your job is not just a doctor, you must be a good counselor, please. Okay, is it clear for the pathophysiology and the management now? Hello? Yes, Dr. it's clear. Okay. When we are going to consider IV fluid, it is very important and must be very clear. If it is severe, if the child is unconscious, is there is continuous rapid uh, stool loss or frequent severe vomiting and the drink poorly and the abdominal distension. Abdominal distension here may, may do not, there is like hypokalemia, which can cause like paralytic areas. And what about the glucose? malabsorption. So all this is indication for the IV fluid. So this is the treat quickly by IV fluid, admit the patient and the treat as soon as possible and start by intravenous. Even if you cannot find, you will go for intraosseous. There is now like a, 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 a drill which you are going to choose the bone usually in the lower tibia and just to go with this drill it will let you go and apply the cannula very simply now okay so if the patient has severe dehydration we are going to admit and start intravenous or intraaceous fluid which is bolus of 20 ml per kilo 
okay, normal saline or render the lactate and reassess after every bolus and stop the boluses once the perfusion improved. It is very important. After that, you are going to go for maintenance and fluid requirements. Fluid requirements, you must know how to calculate it, please. Okay? Fluid requirements means fluid deficit minus fluid given for the resuscitation plus the maintenance. So we have two things, the deficit and the maintenance. Okay, you are going to calculate and I will guide you for the coming slide. Fluid deficit, I mean the percentages of dehydration. So suppose this patient are less than six months, his maintenance is 150 ml per kilo per day. After six months, it will be 120. After one year, it will be calculated like that. The first 10 kilo, it will be 100. The second 10 kilo, from 10 to 20. The first 10 kilo are giving 100. The second 10 kilo are giving 500. Over 20 kilo, so it will be 150 and the 20 for the remaining one. Let us calculate, I will ask someone, if the child now are five months and the six kilos, how much is the daily requirement or the maintenance? Are you good in math or not? Hello? Maybe uh, 900 milliliters mil per day. Very good. So, so he needs 150 per kilo, so it will be 900. Suppose now this child is 12 kilos. How much it will be? The first 10 kilo, it will be 100 per kilo. So the first 10 is 1,000. Okay, the remaining two kilos, it will be 50 ml per kilo. So the total amount will be 1,000. Is it clear or not? Can you say over time, doctor? Yes. How many? How how, how many months again? Uh, if if the child one year plus, and he has uh, twelve kilos. Uh, one thousand one hundred mil. So 1,000 is 1,000 for the first 10 kilos and the 100 for this 2 kilos. If we find another patient who is 24 kilos, so how can we calculate? So it will be the first 10 kilo, it will be 100 per kilo. So it will be 1,000. The second is 50 ml per kilo, so it will be 500. And the remaining after that, it will be 20 ml per kilo. So I have 1,500 and 200. So the total daily requirement or maintenance, it will be 1,700. Uh, Is it clear? Yes, doctor. Okay. This only for the maintenance, but besides the maintenance, we must give the deficit. If the patient has 5%, also I will multiply this 5% for the requirement. So I am trying to complete it. So I will calculate the 
daily requirement with the deficit and divide it per hour like that, okay? Remember that the gastroenteritis is an acute, in most of the cases, it is self-limited disease. Diarrhea are wanting in infancy and the childhood is usually due to viral gastroenteritis, fluid replacement with ORS. If the main stay of management, breastfeeding should be continued, but formula feed should be seized until recovery. Antibiotics and the anti-emetics agent are contraindication. Okay. Remember that the complication of the gastroenteritis or dehydration can be dehydration, okay? Other complication because the fluid are not going enough to the kidney. That's why you are asking about the urine output. It can cause acute kidney injury, okay? It can cause acute electrolyte disturbance, which are very dangerous, like sodium, potassium, and other. Also, some cases it can go to shock and DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. So remember that the issue of diarrhea uh, and dehydration are very, very life-threatening disease. Take care of that, okay? I think we come to the end of, uh, of our lecture now. Uh, now you, it's your turn if you need to ask any questions. Hello. Okay, so you, if you don't have any questions, doctor, I have a question. Uh, since that we're calculating the the severity of dehydration is based on the body weight, then. Uh, do we use the calculation shown in this in, uh, in the slide you show us now, or this is just for the maintenance? Yeah, uh, this is for maintenance, uh -huh. I will add with the maintenance is a deficit. It is not okay. only the body weight, body weight, and the other criteria. So suppose if the patient has five percent dehydration, okay. So I will multiply this five percent multiply by the uh, amount of the fluid, which is if the patient like uh, need 1,000, okay? So I need to add extra 500 for that, okay? Okay, okay. So so uh, in calculating the, the severity of the dehydration, so during the, the history taking and physical examination, we we weight the, ch the child first. Uh, and then should we ask for the previous weight of the child so that we know how much weight is lost. Yeah, this is the idea. Mm -hmm. This is the idea, especially if it is weighted before short time, we are going to consider it. It is very important. Otherwise, we will uh, retrieve the, the weight which is available, but clinically we can see is it either by the other way, is it either mild or moderate or severe also. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Are we welcome. I think uh, uh, you need to go to the pediatric protocol and the other and uh, study some examples for the fluid correction of the dehydration. And if you have any questions, you can come back to me, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. See you, inshallah. Hoping the best. 
Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. We'll be waiting to see you, inshallah, in the world and in the clinic soon. Inshallah, yes. Okay. Take thank care of you. Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Take care too. You are welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Follow the SOB, please, correctly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. Wa salam, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. You are welcome.